Hi, this is Kelly Smith. I'm in Sparks, Nevada. And this week, as you know, we're studying for the whole wide church, Come Follow Me, lessons is Ether 1 through 5. And I had a very interesting experience with this, these chapters years ago, and I wanted to share it with you. First of all, I recommend you watch the lesson uh, outlined by the Book of Mormon Central group, Taylor and Tyler. They did a great job. It's really, really well done. Some really great principles, and I'm not going to cover those same things. I highly recommend you watch those. But I wanted to point out two things. You know, we have the barge. Uh, I've just drawn my description of what the barge looks like that Brother Jared was commanded to build. And we often wonder how in the world building something with the, you know, a hole in the bottom. And the Lord says, what are you going to do? So you put a hole in the top and a hole in the bottom. So one of people wonder, how in the world? How is that going to do anything right? Because, you know, you got water here, right? And there's a water level the, that the barge is going to rest in. So if you unstop the bottom, water is just going to come in. I mean, there's a point where if you sealed the top, it would let some water in. It wouldn't totally fill up. But that doesn't make any sense. So I had I pondered this years and years ago, and I wanted to share with you what, what I found. So the hole in the top and the hole in the bottom. You open the top, let's air in, the hole, open the bottom. Why the bottom? Well, so instead of it just being just like that, why don't we look at it like this? And then we take that. So now it's a tube at the bottom, right? It's above the water line. And so that doesn't allow the water to come in. This does two things. First of all, it allows you, you can have a fishing rod and a fish down here, right? Oops, not a very good fish. Try that again. So you have a fishing hook down the bottom. You can fish out. You can get some food out of it, right? The other thing this allows them to do is it allows them to go to the bathroom. And it goes just down this tube, and then it goes out. So I think, you know, take a look at that, because that answers all the problems. They can open up the top and have air come in whenever they need to. They're going to be you know, big waves are going to crash over the top, so they have to close it all the time. But the, but the bottom one allows them to eat and allows them to get rid of the refuse. All right? So I thought that was very interesting. I, I pondered that years ago and came up with that uh, solution. The second thing is is the the lights, the stones. And as pointed out in the Book of Mormon Central one, you know, there's, there's a lot of effort that uh, Brother Jared did to create those stones. I mean, how many of you ever molten rock? I mean, that, that's an incredible amount of energy to do that. He had to have been under inspiration as to where to find this rock, because I mean, you melting crystal, oh holy cow! We, you know, he doesn't have propane, doesn't have all the things that we have, the modern you know, gases and things, to do that. I mean, it's it's pretty, it's a lot of something, it bellows and who knows what's going on there. But he brings to the Lord sixteen small stones, and the Lord touches him, touches the stones one by one, and makes them glow. You know the story. Brother Jared is shocked that he sees the finger of the Lord and through a beautiful exchange he you know the Lord asks him you know sawest thou more than this he goes nay Lord show thyself unto me and so because of that I don't know of anywhere in the scripture that mankind tells God what to do I, I don't know of one not like that it's always asking him nay Lord show thyself unto me. There's been a lot of debate as to what it means, you know, never have I shown myself unto man as thou hast. People wonder, how in the world? I mean, there's Adam, there's Enoch, there's Noah. We know that people have seen God before, Brother Jared, but why is this different? And I submit to you a couple things. One is, like it's pointed out in other things, that he shows himself as Jesus Christ. He's never showed himself as Jesus Christ before. He's always been as Jehovah. Now he's showing himself as Jesus Christ. So the question is, why Jesus Christ? Well, you've got these 16 small stones. I'm not going to draw them all. They're touched, and what do they do? They get hung in the, in the boat right here, and they shine light in the boat to give light into the vessel so they're not in the dark the whole time. So what is one of the words of Jesus Christ? The light of the world. He is the light of the world. He is their light. 
He's the light by which they cross the oceans. Everything, it's, it's him. It's not, it's a beautiful thing. You know, the brother Jared had some problems to solve. The Lord gives him, you know, some solutions. Fix this, fix that. What do you want me to do about this? And then he gives him in the end one of the most marvelous visions ever given to mankind. He sees the whole history of the world from its foundation, its design, its creation, all the way to its death and resurrection in the celestial kingdom. He sees the whole thing. He sees all of us. He sees us. He's not, he saw every inhabitant of the earth from beginning to end. And, we're, and that's what's in the sealed portion of the brass plates. I don't know about you, but I'd like to know those answers. How was the earth created? How old is it? What's, its, you know, what's the outcome of it? All those things. How, how did the flood take place? How do those things? They're all in that book. They're all in those sealed portions of the plates. We've got you know, a sealed portion that was given to Joseph Smith. And there's a portion of this that we can't, that he was told specifically, don't touch it. In a future day, you will be allowed to. Someone will be allowed to. It will be translated and we'll have that. So my suggestion here is, listen, the light of the world is going to shed not only light on them, he shed light on Joe to, to him. He gave him the Urim and Thummim. We have the three-cornered diamonds. Urim and Thummim. He gave him those. He gave him those stones. Jared, Brother Jared gives him, wants him to touch 16 stones. The Lord, in return, gives him two more. Through these, this is going to be translated. And all the light, the light of everything we want to know is all in there. All we got to do is believe the first part. We gotta just believe the part that we already have. If we'll just believe that part, if we'll just study it and pray about it and share it and teach with it and be converted to the gospel through the part that we have, the Book of Mormon, if we are if we are told if we accept and believe and do everything we're supposed to do with that part, we'll get the rest. And all the arguments that everybody has over all the things in the earth, evolution and science and religion, all these things wash away. They're all right there. So the answer to finding the answer of all these questions is to read that Book of Mormon. It will shed light on you for you and me. And if we believe that part, we'll be given more light. And I just wanted to share that with you. There's a reason why, you know, the brother Jared started out with some problems and in, the, in, in return the Lord gives him way more than he asked for. It's the same with us. If we believe what he's given us, you know, the Lord asked Brother Jared, will you believe the, my words? I mean, I find that very interesting phrase. He's standing there. He just asked him to touch these stones. You saw his finger. Are you going to believe my words? Brother Jared says, yea, Lord, I know thou, thou speakest the truth and canst not lie. If we will believe what we've already been given, we'll be given more. The brother Jared was given way more than he started out for. He had a little mission, something to accomplish, and then in return, hundreds of times more valuable information than just touching some stones to get him across the sea. That's my message today. and It's a message for us today because we have this same opportunity. The Lord says, Moroni tells us, when the people have the faith of the brother of Jared, then all these things will be manifest unto us. We'll have this again. And that's my plea. I pray that we'll do whatever we can to believe what we've got because the rest is coming. We'll have it all. I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.